everybody welcome back to retro card out today is a special one for me okay it's my 1957 e-series and the reason i'm doing the video is i put a few photographs out onto our facebook page don't forget to go there also like our um, instagram and our tiktok and our youtube channel go and subscribe and support us there but i put photos of this car onto facebook and within 12 hours, nearly 20,000 people had viewed it and the comments came in faster than you can believe. Everybody was giving a lot of feedback and a lot of information. So to all of you on my Facebook page, on our Facebook pages, thank you so much. So we decided to do a video about the car. But what more important is not just the car, is the history of the car, which I'm going to explain to you how this car came about and its life story because it's in the same family from literally new. And it comes with quite a story. So I'm going to tell you a story if you don't mind. And also show you the car at the same time. So starting off, if I'm going to tell you the story. It's a 1957 Vauxhall E-Series Dormobile. Which was made by Smith & Walter, a coach building company in the UK. So how did we come around to get this car? So my father was stationed, my late father, in Northern Rhodesia, which is now Zambia and he was transferred as a station master from there to Bulawayo which is in southern Rhodesia in those days and he needed to move so my father was a bit of an opal guy so he loved his opal cuppy tons and things like that so he had an opal cuppy ton I was born 63 so to give you some information this is a 57 so just after I was born he had to transfer out okay he got into his Opal, packed the family up, that's me, my mom and my, uh, my dad, and off we go. We immigrate and we're coming back or moving back to southern Rhodesia. On the way back, driving at night because he had to pack up after work, in his Opal Capitan, he hit a kudu. The kudu just about destroyed the front end of his Opal Capitan and he had to be at his workplace the next day. So to be able to do that, to get to his workplace the next day, he had to get the car fixed. So it was a Friday night when he'd hit the uh, kudu. The car was badly damaged, was undrivable. He limped into the um, town, I think it's now called Livingston. Okay. So when he got there, the guy said, look, there's no ways of fixing the car. It was a Vauxhall dealership actually at the time. And they said, we can't really help you with the only dealership in town. Um, what we can do is, we've got this car, which a customer, when he ordered it new, didn't want it, it sat on the showroom floor for a long time. The dealer principal had driven around a bit, but it essentially was a brand new car and was just sitting on the dealership floor. Uh, he said he didn't like it and they didn't want to take the car. So they were keen to get rid of the car and they said to my dad, We'll do it straight swap. We'll take your damaged Opal. We'll fix it and move it on because the Opals were fetching good money those days. And we'll give you the Vauxhall, which he gladly did. Packed it up. And here we have the car today. However, packed the family into the car, went off to Bulawayo. And it wasn't many years after that. And i got to tell you that it, it probably was around 65, 66, 1966, somewhere around there. The car got stolen. He never ever found it again okay and many years go by okay I'm now 16 17 years of age 18 years of age somewhere around there I don't remember exactly too many years ago I'm now 59 um, my father had a borehole company and we had to go out and put boreholes in in all the travel trust lands in Rhodesia in those days now known as Zimbabwe um, and I had to take the Bedford big RLI which they used in the army and full of all the borehole equipment and all the staff and we would go out with our tents and things like that and we'd be gone two three weeks in the bush setting up living in the bush um, putting up boreholes for these little crawls which are little mud hut villages with straw that you see in the movies and things like that for all these guys all around so i had been doing that for about a year or so for my dad and the one particular year i went out and we went to a crawl but we had to be we we're about 10 miles from the crawl in the bush putting up uh, the closest best place for water we did that um, we ran short of drinking water in the at the tent and myself and one of my staff members i felt like a bit of a walk and a bit of change of scenery took some canisters and off we went down to the local crawl 
to go and meet the local uh, chief to ask him if we could get some water because we were busy putting in boil water for them anyway. So we did that and when I was there, I noticed this car, but not like this. And I'm going to post some pictures and things like that if we can find them and for you to see. But it wasn't like this. So the whole front end was missing. All the doors were missing. The back was missing. And it was used chicken mesh, pieces of wood nailed inside it. And it, it was a chicken coop for chickens for the old chief. So I took a look at it and I thought, wow, that's weird. And luckily for me, I had, remember those cameras used to push the button and the film came out the front. I took one or two pictures of it and I thought, well, that's really interesting and curious. And that was what I, I thought of it and I left it like that. Uh, we completed the job. Off I went back to Bulawayo to my dad and I was sitting having a chat to my dad. And I said, look what I saw. And I took out the pictures and I showed my late father. And my late father had one look at it and he said, that's my car. So I said, well, how do you know it's your car? He said, well, the dealership at that time had told us that this had been imported from England, was the only one in southern and northern Rhodesia, none others in the, in, in the country, either both sides, which is like Zambia and Zimbabwe. So he then realized it's his car. So him and I took a trip. We got into his Peugeot 404 at the time van, drove all the way out to this uh, um, old chief. We had a chat to him. We didn't say anything. We just said, look, you know, this car and that sort of thing. And he said he would got given it by somebody and all the parts and everything else are lying in one of his other crawls, all the bonnet fenders, the engine and everything he'd taken out and put there because he needed a chicken coop. So we negotiated a deal, $100. Uh, a week later, we went and took our big truck out there. We loaded it with the fenders, with the grills, with the engine, everything. We loaded it, put it in the, the truck, brought it back to Bulawayo, and then we started restoring it. And we restored it from back to front, inside and out, like brand new, it went to a couple of shows in Bulawayo. The motor, when uh, it's only got a thousand miles on it, so we we did that. So then we immigrated to South Africa many years later, 1984, and I then drove this car. I hadn't even done a thousand miles. I was still running it in. I drove it from Bulawayo to Johannesburg, which is approximately, I would guess, 1,600, 2,000 kilometers, something like that, about 1,000, 1,200 miles. At 30 mile an hour because I needed to run the motor in. Um, when I reached the border the first time, the diff packed up. I turned around and go back to Bulawayo. The border is about 400 kilometers. Went back, had the diff fixed. There was a bearing that went on the outer case and had it fixed. And then I drove all the way back and I drove it all the way to Johannesburg. And then we moved to our suburb. We bought a house of a guy that had done some additions to the house but hadn't put it on plans. It was a home build. And the house one day, for some reason, set a light. And you can see the paint and the condition it is as you look around when we do the video. The ceiling boards collapsed on the car and started burning the paint and things like that. It was a showroom condition. Um, and we managed to pull it out, drag it out, and the whole house burnt to the ground. So the only thing I could save was this car. So I saved it. And my dad and I's pride and joy was this, and I had a couple of Zephyrs, and we drive them on weekends and that. And unfortunately, 30 odd years ago, my late father passed away, and my late father and I were so close. So I never had the heart because every time I got into it, I got emotional. So I just parked it and it had been damaged in the fire and, and I basically parked it with my mate Brian and, and I left it there and forgot about it for many years. And now that my son, who's the cameraman, is in his 20s, he's keen to get them going because he loves classic cars and we've decided to pull this old girl out, totally do a restoration and uh, get her back to her former glory. So this video in a way for me is a homage to my late father, um, known as Artie or Big Artie or Little Artie, Edwards and um, it's respect for him. So when we restored it the first time, the car was a two-tone light blue and dark blue, but it was originally light blue down to here and dark blue bottom. I didn't like that, so I said, no, just light blue top. So when we restored it this time in homage and respect to my dad, I'm going to do it like he wanted original, how he got it, which was light blue down here, all the way up and right through. So the car has original leather upholstery inside. The interior is basically immaculate. Um, and I'm going to take you through the car. So we're going to come around this side and, and you're going to see now, you'll know it's a 57 if you look at the grill. The grill is very different from the previous video you'll see on Brian's car, which is a 56. Okay, all these kind of things I have. So a bit of work to be done. So while we're here, let me just pop the bonnet. You can probably see, look at the, 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 the bird, different to the 56, lovely. Um, you can see the damage here on the bonnet, the beautiful chrome flutes. Okay, let's pop the bonnet and you'll have a look underneath. 2.2 liter uh, straight six. Okay, you can see she's never been touched. She's been standing like this for years, covered in dust and dirt. 
um, as you see her is as she is. Um, so a fair amount of work to be done to bring her back to her former glory. Um, so you can even see here, if you come here, look here. The radiator was done, can you see the bullet wire? There's the number. It was done by radiator and uh, mining, I think it is, I can see. Yeah, mining, uh, PTY Limited, bullet wire, and there's the little stamp and the serial number. That's when the radiator was done. So that's in uh, Rhodesia, or Zimbabwe now. Okay, so let's, uh, let's close her up. So this is a Velox, okay, 2.2 liter 6. Let's come around this side, and you'll have a look, and I'll explain to you. So this is still got, and we come the camera land down here. It's original tires. Can you see the cracks? The tree's not even worn. Can you see the cracks in the walls? It's still been stood on its original tires from 1957. This white wall here, because I liked a white wall. Okay, now in Rhodesia in those days, you couldn't get white wall tires. So we went overseas to Germany. We were traveling, that sort of thing. And we found these in Germany. So these I bought in Germany probably at about 19... 80, uh, sorry, 1970, probably about 1976, somewhere around there. So we bought them because we thought they're really cool, and we put them on. So these came from Germany, I bought them there, put them on, and these have been on the car to this day from all those years. We'll have to obviously now replace tires and get proper white wall tires. The hubcaps are still original, but as you can see, they've now rusted and need some care and love, but it's still standing air in its tires all these years. Absolutely amazing. It's just amazing this vehicle. The tire size is a 615L um, Which we hope we can still get but coming around here, which is which is nice Is the only thing that the sad for me is it's got a tinted window. So when we had to replace the windscreen was broken The chrome here fits in here But when we had the car done the panel beater sprayed it for us because we didn't have the panel beating equipment at the time lost the chrome bead around here so if any of you out there and want to make a donation we'd really appreciate the chrome bead that goes around this e-series let us know if you can help us out um, and we'd really be really grateful so this is a tinted windscreen and down so coming down look at the style of this car uh, all of these kind of things here i have new now so we'll put all the new stuff on again which i love about this car handles there and you push here to open the door it's as simple as that, like that. But before we do that, let's just walk around the car. You can see if you look on the roof here, if you get up here with the camera, the damage from the fire. So what I did was this red stuff that you see, I didn't want the car to rust. So what I did was I got red oxide, rust proof, and I painted the whole car so that I could any bare metal or anything that was open, I painted to protect it from rust. Roof carrier, which we'll restore and put on the car as well. Okay, then coming around here, again, very, very cool feature. Here's where the saloon came down here. So Smith and Walter had so many saloons, I think the Vauxhall were clever, sent them so many saloons and they made the Grosvenor, which is a different shape here. Okay, and Dormobile, which made this particular one. So if any of you out there know, please, anybody of the old school at Smith and, Wal uh, Smith and Walter who might be able to help us, how many did they make of these? In our worldwide search over many years, we found only three. Groveners we found more, but of this particular one, only three. So we know of one in New Zealand, one in Australia, and one here. We don't know of any others. There might be many, we don't know. So this is, back in the day, the first experimentation on fiberglass. So this, I would say, I'd have to recondition because it's probably old and fragile now. Okay, but this is here. So they cut it here, joined the roof, which is metal, and this turned into fiberglass here. This, metal, okay. Again, the spats, which are lovely. I think I'll probably be able to take these ones out. If I can still remember. Okay, no, I, there we are. There we are. And out it comes, and there's your wheel. So if you change your spare wheel, that's what you do. Take it and you just pop it back in here. Okay, let me see if I can still remember how to do it myself. There we go. Uh, let's do that. In there. Okay, there we are, and it's on, perfectly. Okay, so we're coming around this side. Now, I haven't been in this car, or touched this car, except for moving from place to place in 30 plus years, maybe 40 years already. Love these here. Okay, and guys, I have a se spare set, but any of you out there know where I can get a set of new ones for this, please drop me an inbox message. Let me know where we can get new. Now we come around here, same thing. 
fiberglass. Awesome little brackets, guys. I haven't opened this in donkey's years. As you can see, bumper's got a bit of rust on it, okay? Push the button here. Let's see if it will even still work. Nah, it'll work. Come on, work for me. There we are. Does it not work? Yeah, come on, come on. I haven't opened it in so many years. Does it not want to open for me? There we are. And there's your... Put that up, put that up, and there it is. Okay, this... So I haven't been in here for so long, how's that? So this sits underneath the car, and this under, right underneath the car where the spare wheel would go in. Let's take this out. So we can show you. Original, the carpets are still immaculate. It's just dirty and dusty. Um, these things belong in the front of the engine bay. So how cool is this? <laughs> Basically lifts up. Your petrol tanks into there. I just don't want to do any damage. I see that some of the panels are pulling a little bit loose. Um, so that's nice. If you stay there, I'm going to pop the seat down. So the seat goes all the way down, but I'm going to get the camera and stay there. I'm going to show you from there. Stay there. I don't remember how to do it all myself, eh? <laughs> uh, oh yeah, there we are. I've got to get in. Yes, I haven't been in this car in so many years. Okay. Let's see if I can remember how. I don't even remember anymore. <laughs> Something's hooking. I've got to let something unhook. Uh, I'm trying to remember what. Something unhooks. I don't remember. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, hang on, wait a minute. I think. No, it's hooking, yeah. Isn't it hooking, yeah? Doesn't it have to unhook from there? Because that side's pretty jammed. Okay, we might not be able to do it today, but there's the idea, guys. The whole thing folds up. Probably just all, I haven't been in here so long. It folds down and makes a beautiful bed in the back, and it's really awesome. So, a bit of TLC, clean these carpets, they'll probably be beautiful. I'm gonna have to do some restoration work on this fiberglass. I think it's got brittle over the years. I can see here because it's pulling out. So I think the fiberglass has got brittle. They have to get to a good fiberglass specialist and have a look. And as you can see down here, here's the Zimbabwe sticker. So it was after that that I still had the car and changed, country had changed hands. Let's come around. Oh yeah, let me open that side, more space. Okay, so. Like I said, this is going down memory lanes for me. Hard for me not to get choked up. But look at that. Leather upholstery. That is still from <laughs> back in the day. Carpets and everything immaculate. Little cigarette. Uh, I'm going to pop around and let the door go, cameraman. I'm going to come around. So, very dusty as you can see. I mean, look at my hands. This, I haven't been in this car in so long. Little ash. Oh, there's a cigarette stompy in there. <laughs> That's a new, I'll, I'll save it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, as you can see, lots of space. And this is all immaculate still and in very good condition. Um, so, yeah, it would be a lovely project just to get it going again. And restored would be awesome. So, there's going to be things that we're missing, which I'll probably uh, try and source in that. But, for instance, there, I see... Over the years, don't know what's happened there, but that little unit is missing. A little chrome piece around here is missing. Hopefully I can find, and I can put it. This is all leather, hey? This is leather. All of this is leather. How awesome is that? Um, and you can see over here where we're old age. It's pulled apart now. Obviously it needs some repair. We'll have to send it in and get it repaired. Um, things like that. Um, let's come on down here. Present scene, now you, know, you can see. This is all now deteriorated and fallen out. Uh, the, tr uh, the trunk, in, uh, uh, probably it's nice, this is okay, just stitch on a new piece here. So that probably has to be placed there. Uh, you can see this thing I was talking about earlier. That's my pants are going to get dirty. There's a little piece that's missing on Brian's one. 
Uh, probably what I'll do is get inventive with a lathe and make one and put it on this side. Again, okay. see, there's the original voxel clock. I'm going to go around the other side just now, cameraman. Well, let's go here. Yeah, I got the camera. I got it. Okay. There's the original voxel clock. So that I had fitted because I had a Cresta um, 57 saloon and I had a spare clock for it. So I put that one in there. So it's not a standard feature. Okay. And there's your knobs and your, your little buttons and things. Period radio, if anybody knows. Missing. Don't know where to find one. Um, here's your temperature controls over here coming up over here to your speedo cluster over there beautiful uh, rear view mirror okay and if I try I'm gonna lie flat here and show you the roof lining look at it's immaculate it's absolutely like brand new so this is really exciting when I see this it just makes my heart pump custard when I have to see this excuse the weird angles on the cameras guys so there are those little quarter lights and things like this if any of you know where would we get these rubbers? These rubbers are absolutely, if I was, try and get in a bit close, I don't know if I can, you can see it, but these quarter light rubbers are absolutely shot. If anybody's got ideas in these rubbers who can help me out on the video, that'd be awesome. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. So this is my pride and joy, and also for my son. There he is, my cameraman. He's gonna enjoy it, and he's gonna want to do it as well, so we can't wait. So guys, there you are, let me pass the camera back. So this is my pride and joy, and I'm hoping that uh, it'll be as nice as it can. A lot of you said just restore it and drive it as it is. I will probably do that initially until I can source whatever missing bits there are. And then it's going to be a strip and restore in homage to my late father, and as an heirloom to my son, and we're going to restore it. The light blue from here upwards, because this was light blue, you can basically just see a little bit of light blue still left there. Um, down to here, it was, it was in his day. I didn't like it like I said so I will take it back to in respect for my late father do it from there light blue up and from there the dark blue brown down and it'll be absolutely awesome so guys that's it for me a heart felt thank you for your support what would be awesome is there's nearly 20,000 of you have been on our Facebook page um, contributing and viewing and all the rest of it what would really be awesome would be 20,000 subscribers on our channel on YouTube for this would be absolutely phenomenal so my thanks to you all for being great supporters and really look forward to you seeing us soon and the restoration of this project and another project of mine which we'll be doing so guys for now remember to subscribe share like tell everybody about this video let them go and watch it and please we need information i can't do it without you how many were built can somebody tell me put me in contact with somebody where would i source certain parts for this vehicle and the value, if anybody knows what kind of value this, this would be. From me, Jordan, my cameraman, son, have an awesome day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now.